because you know long exposures with the waves it creates that kind of ghostly look about it. I am in North Berwick again after quite a few attempts before to try and get this shot. Uh, I think I've got the timing just right now. You can just see behind me there is a little uh, kind of natural pool that's here. It's just you can see the waves just lapping over it. And the plan is, is for a long exposure, and that is a solid, solid structure. And in the foreground, in the background, sorry, if I spin you around, if you will see but there. Over there is the Bass Rock. So the plan is to have a kind of leading line. Unfortunately, there's an awful lot of uh, seaweed on the actual beach itself, so I'm going to be a lot closer than I'd planned on the actual the walled part of the paddling pool. But that's exactly what this is. It's just a kind of a, a, a natural paddling pool, and because of that solid rock, and because of the waves crashing around it, and a long exposure, it's going to smooth that right up and have a nice white effect with the leading wall of leading line of the walled pool going right up towards the, the Bass Rock. That's the plan anyway. But I think just a wee bit too early, I think high tide is not, uh, it's in about you know 10, 15 minutes. Um, so what I'll do, I'll probably just go and have a coffee and just hang about because I need it. I need a wee bit more of the wall visible than it is at the moment. It's just uh, a bit too submerged. Um, but uh, fingers crossed the waves still keep on lapping against it because that's really what we need. Um, you know long exposures with the waves it creates that kind of ghostly look about it with the wall structure coming through just makes it a wee bit more um, more interesting so I found a, I found a possible composition down here uh, with that wall being a leading line but unfortunately the, the tide is just still a wee bit too high you can see glimmers of the wall um, just just coming through and I've got a 10 stop on at the moment, the big, the big stopper, the Lee big stopper. Just to stretch out the lot, the lot, as much of a, an exposure as possible. But um, it's, just, it's just not quite low enough to tide. So what I'm going to try and do now, I'm obviously going to hang around. Uh, wait for this is the tide at its highest point. Uh, so it's, it's heading back out as we speak. But um, I'm going to put a polarizer on it and see if that makes any difference. That might be able to cut through some of it might be able to get uh, some uh, suggestion of that wall that is actually just, just underneath the water at the moment. So I'm going to give that a go now and see what difference that makes. Well, we are getting there slowly but surely. It's, uh, it's an hour since I set up this shot. Uh, the tide is re retreating ever so slowly. But it's getting there, that's the main thing. I'm, I'm glad I've just not moved. I'm glad I'm happy with this composition. I'm just gonna stick with it until there's enough of that wall showing where it's disturbed on the outside. It might actually be nice because within that walled area, that actual paddling pool itself, it might be uh, quite still, so it'll be a dramatic uh, variation of the, the still water within and the choppy water out with that walled area as well. Okay, so I've actually changed my composition. I've moved slightly. I've gone from a kind of high up standing point, slightly over behind me there, thinking that that one leading line was going to 
take me in the right direction towards the Bash Rock. Because actually, when I'm starting to see more of the wall, it kicks off, it has a bit of a, it comes back in itself. And that last line, that last leading line where it kicks away from actually takes you pretty much straight towards the Bash Rock, which is ideal. So I've actually come along here and I've lowered myself right down um, just to get more movement of that wash coming in. Um, and we're starting to see the, the wall now. It's starting to make itself a wee bit more visible. So I'm just going to keep on snapping away. I've got the polarizer on and I've got the big stopper on. Uh, 30 second exposure. You're just getting such kind of nice hazy, hazy movement. Um, and then just focusing on that wall, it just kicks right off in towards the, the bash rock. Unfortunately enough, I mean, it's a bright, it's extremely bright uh, day, uh, which is nice because there's not too much distractions. The sun is hitting the lighthouse, which is on the bash rock as well, really illuminating that, which is absolutely perfect. Um, the actual colours of the sky and everything is really nice because there's a, 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 you know, that's kind of, it's a low winter sun, so it's not too harsh, although it's extremely bright. It's a, it's a nice bright and you get some nice kind of pastel colours. The original thought when I came here was it was going to be a black and white shot because long exposure sea with dark objects in the middle of the water it's just lends itself so well to black and white but looking at the back of the camera now the colours that are coming through are really quite nice and pastel really quite calming and that smoothed out water really makes a big difference as well again a calming aspect to the, the image so I'm just going to stay put where I am here and snap away just seeing what the best level of that water is to uh, allow that wall to become quite visible. But as I said, even right now I'm watching it, it's the, the tide is going out, so I'm gonna get back to it and start snapping away again. Yeah, so I've got the polarizer on at the moment, so I'm deciding the reason I've got the polarizer on is just to cut through obviously the waters to stop the reflection so that wall, that hard solid line, the leading line up to the, uh, the Bash Rock is visible. But I'm also not wanting to cut out the reflection of the sky because I'm, I'm kind of after the sky and the sea to be one of the same, if you know what I mean. And I just feel like maybe having this polarizer on at the moment might be taking that reflection, that reflective nature of the, of, the, of the water that is reflecting the sky and making it the same, taking it away a wee bit. So, what do I do, what do I do? I think what I'll do, I'll keep the polarizer on at the moment until the water is really lower than the wall. That way I won't need the polarizer at all and I'll just take that way so I get the real reflective, the, the symmetry between the sea reflecting exactly what the sky is doing as well. That's the plan anyway. Take one more shot then I'm going to move further around uh, and elevate myself, elevate the camera a wee bit higher up. Talking about working a scene, I'm now moving myself further up the beach because there is, a, with the, the water going away, there's more sand visible and that nice glow of the sun against the sand. The sand is a wee bit disrupted with bits and pieces though, but uh, yeah, so I've pulled myself further back up the beach to, um, to capture some of that sand. So it's the golden sand, cold bluish tones of the water and the sea and the darkness of the, the wall creating this pool area. So yeah, another similar, well, exactly the same scene, just a, a, a different take in it as well. Because um, the conditions are so good, might as well make the most of it. <laughs> 